Hey everyone, uh, Jeremy here. It's Tuesday night and we're going to create some art. It's going to be awesome. Um, glad to see you guys on a Tuesday night. Uh, hopefully you guys are having a, um, a good start to your week. It's, it's Fat Tuesday if you're into that. Uh, it's Mardi Gras season. Um, I was, I was kind of hoping that I would make it down to New Orleans um, this year, but it, it just wasn't in the cards. That's definitely on my bucket list. Uh, I haven't been down there. Um, I thought about maybe creating some art related to Mardi Gras tonight, but I, I don't know. I, I, I just don't know if I have the colors to capture it. But um, instead, we're going to work on one of our uh, coffee art pieces. Uh, this one's going to be a bighorn sheep or ram, whatever you want to call it. Um, I looked up to see if there was a difference between the two. Apparently, there isn't. So I'm just going to call it bighorn sheep. And um, we're going to do our coffee thing and uh, see how it goes. So if you're into that, uh, hopefully you guys can uh, to chat with me and um, you know watch me work on this. If you're not into that, hopefully you'll stick around and just uh, chat with me anyway. Uh, it'll be a lot of fun. So I'm gonna hop right into it. Uh, let's see. So I've got my uh, paper all set up. I kind of sketched out where I want this um, this sheep to be. Usually these take a little bit of time. I, I don't expect to finish it all in one sitting, um, but hopefully I can get enough done to where um, you know it kind of looks like what it's going to end up looking like. Um, but if you guys have seen me work on these in the past, you know, like it, it's kind of, um, there's kind of a process there and, um, I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with my process. I, I like how they turn out. Um, and, uh, I'll try to explain it as I go along, but mostly we're, we're just hanging out, having fun. Um, I'm going to get started, uh, by putting in some, some of my drippy effects. <laughs> I don't know what else to call it, but underneath the chin of this horn, I want it to be, um, underneath the chin of this big horn, not the horn. Uh, I want it to be kind of like dark and, and drippy and stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in some of that just to get us started. I've been getting a lot of compliments on these uh, coffee art pictures. Uh, I just gave away one the other day to um, to a relative who wanted one. And um, last week I, I gave away my, my uh, great horned owl, uh, which turned out really nice. I like that one. I'm, I might redo that one just to uh to have another one in my collection but uh i think all of these are going to good homes so i'm pretty happy with that you know i should have got some paper towels hopefully yeah i don't know if i have any paper towels around here oh well maybe i won't need it so much all right sorry a little scatterbrain tonight i really uh, should have prepped a little bit more um yeah so uh shout outs to people in the uh house we got kid in the house we got hater we got uh, Rome dog. Um, hopefully, uh, some more people will show up as we go along. But if not, hey, we got enough for a party. Um, let's see. Let me grab some of my brushes here. I'm gonna start with uh, I think this one. But yeah. So while that's um, while that's draw drying. Uh, the next step is to kind of come in and put down like kind of a base layer for all the different parts that uh, would be dark. Hey, because I can. Um, so we kind of have a bit of a, a face going on here. This would kind of come through and around here. And then the basics of the nose would be mostly white on this particular um, sheep. I'm gonna call it sheep. Just call it sheep. There we go. Part of um the reason why I do these uh wildlife pictures is because I am actually uh into wildlife, and to me it's kind of um I mentioned before on this channel that like a lot of this is just like you know me experimenting, me having fun, me learning, me doing these all these different things to kind of improve myself. And, um, you know, I like it that you guys are tagging along with me, but it's also like a, a journey of self-improvement. So part of that self-improvement -impro is that I get to learn about these, uh, these different creatures that I'm working on. So like, I don't know the difference between a, uh, bighorn sheep and a ram. Uh, they look kind of the same to me. Like, um, uh, you know, I've, I've heard people call them both and, and stuff. So, um, part of the fun is that before I start the stream so that I can actually talk it about these things without sounding like an idiot i actually look look up some of these things so i get to learn some of the things about these animals that you know i've never even seen one of these in person so like uh my experience with them is pretty limited but now if i ever do meet one i'll know what to call it before it <laughs> ramps me into the ground <laughs>
but yeah, um, just uh, working on this ramp tonight. It is it is Mardi Gras. I kind of wanted to go out. Uh, there's a Cajun spot in town that I think the owner is from New Orleans. Um, definitely Cajun, and um, they had this thing that they were supposed to be doing tonight, uh, where they had like shrimp bro boil and all of that stuff, and like crawdad. Like I don't think it was shrimp. Sorry, uh, like crawdads. But they're they're going all out for like uh, Mardi Gras. I was wanting to maybe go that to that, but. No, I'm going to work on this instead. I think this is a good idea. Maybe, maybe, maybe after this I'll go. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. But it, it's party night. Any of you guys from, like, New, or New Orleans or any of that stuff? Any of you guys ever go to Mardi Gras? I guess some of you guys are, uh, you know, from out of the country. I They have, they have these things elsewhere. Like, I know Brazil is supposed to be really big for these. Uh, I guess it's called carnival season. But I don't know. I just know here in the United States, it's basically down in New Orleans. Let's see. What did I miss in here? I thought the owl was for the coffee shop. Yes, uh, kid. Um, the owl was for the coffee shop because that's their logo, but then somebody um, somebody said that they really, really liked it and asked if I would part with it. So I had to part with that one. So now I need to do another owl for the coffee shop because that was the original intent. And I, I find that uh, some of these I may end up having to do that because like um, the other one I gave away to like a family member was like that stag beer uh, because they really wanted it. And then now I have to kind of replace that one. And then, of course, you know, the, this all started with me doing a horse, and I had to give that one away, so I wanted to create another horse. So I, I think I'm just going to be in the perpetual process of, like, making these, giving them away, making more. And then maybe at some point I'll have a collection built up because, like, that's the actual goal. Whether it, It's all supposed to go hanging up in the coffee shop, but also, you know, like, I would like to maybe do an art show at some point. And um, you need you need to have some on hand for that. So I'm I'm kind of just playing it by ear. Like I kind of gave up on it last week. Um, the the intent is to create these to hang up on, in the uh, uh, coffee shop. But also I don't want to I don't want to tell people no if they really want one. You know. Um, so I kind of given up trying to control it. I'm just going to see what happens. I'm just going to keep cranking them out, and then you know wherever they end up, they end up. Some of these have to hang up in the coffee shop. Also, the um, um, I may have another potential show. This isn't for like to sell pictures or anything. It's just to d display them. Um, there is a a horse show coming up that's pretty big. Um, it's like one of the uh, it's a uh, four five star four star four star uh, horse show. Yeah, because I think five star is the Olympics, so it's a um, it's it's one of the uh, shows that you have to compete in to qualify for the Olympics. Um, so that's coming up, and um, they have kind of like a, a room for the athletes where you know if you're like an athlete at this particular event, you're you're able to go there and kind of like chill and watch TV, hang out, eat food, snacks, get a massage, things like that. So uh, my buddy's kind of running that. And um, he was saying that it would be kind of cool if they had like a bunch of equestrian art hanging up in that space. Now, that's just for display. It's not like it's, you know, like the coffee shop where potentially you might sell something. Um, this is all just like equestrian art that, you know, equestrian people get to see and stuff like that. So that's kind of cool. Um, I kind of like the idea of that a little bit better than the pressure of doing like an art show. Cause I, I just want people to see my stuff. Like, I don't care at this like stage of my life or, or my career as an artist or whatever. I don't care about like selling it so much as I just want people to check it out, you know? Cause like, that's the whole reason why I put these, these videos up on YouTube is I want people to check them out and stuff. So to me that, that feels pretty cool. So anyway, yeah. So if I can, if I can get some equestrian art done before then, I think that's in April. Um, 
I'll be able to display that in front of a bunch of equestrian athletes, which is really, really cool, you know. Because these, these are the guys who actually um, participate in, like, the Olympics uh, for horse sports. So to get my art in front of them would be kind of an honor, I, I guess. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. But not terrible. I'm looking into getting certified by the FAA for a commercial drone pilot. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah, I forgot you have to be certified for that nowadays. I think it's just a test, buddy. Like, it's not a big deal. Uh, I think there's like a, a fee or something and like a simple test or something that basically you, you, anybody would pass. I, w I wouldn't sweat that too much. Um... Oh, Fred talking about the Mardi Gras, <laughs> like Mardi Gras is overrated. Um, at the end of the night, you're drunk and walking on a bunch of beads. That sounds awesome. That sounds great. That's exactly what I'm looking for. What do you mean overrated? That sounds perfectly rated. I mean, you know, it's on my bucket list. It, like, it, you know, there's live streams and stuff. Like, you can go to Earth Cam right now um, and go and see a live stream of Bourbon Street. Um, so I know what to expect. I know it's just a bunch of drunk people walking around and stuff like that. But that that's cool, though. You know, that, that sounds like fun. Um, like I said, it'd be like an experience um, that I probably would only want to do once. I mean, I'm not I'm not in college. I'm not like a teenager or anything like that. So like just to go out there one time and experience it. Plus, I haven't been to uh, New Orleans yet. It's, it's on my bucket list for other reasons. I enjoy jazz, um, the food. All of that stuff is good reasons for me to go. But then also if it's coinciding with uh, Mardi Gras, that, that'd be even better. But I plan to go anyway, um, you know, whether whether I go there for Mardi Gras or not. I just like the idea of Mardi Gras. It's like one big final hurrah before you go into like, you know, a period of, of uh, giving things up and introspection and, and things like that. Like, I'm not Catholic, but I love the idea of Lent. I, I love the idea of giving things up, sacrificing, you know, spending some time reflecting upon things. That's all, I, I'm all about that kind of stuff, whether I'm, in, <laughs> whether I'm a religious person or not. You know, those are all good things that everybody should participate in. So, plus, uh, I have mentioned before that it's the season of the uh, fried fish at the, that um, church that I, like, I love the church's fried fish, so that's what I'm looking forward to. That starts this weekend. It's always a Friday fish fry. So I, I might actually, like during my Friday stream, just like eat uh, my fried fish in front of you guys because it's like such a big deal to me. I know I sound like an idiot, but let's see. I'm going to put my readers on with Generation Near You. I'm Generation X. Uh, I'm. I'm right at the border of Gen X and Millennial. Like, I don't know what the cutoff is, but I looked it up at one point and I'm like right there. So I, you know, some, some might lump me in as a, like a millennial and some might lump me in as Gen X. If I'm Gen X, I'm, a, I'm on the younger side. You could probably sell all of them. Can you put prices or just for display? So, uh, great question, kid. I appreciate that. Um, so, at the coffee shop, the intent is they, they're hung up, you know, so that people can buy them. So, those would have prices on them. Um, so, that that show is actually like a, a show, you know, like a commercial show. So, like, it's for me, it's just hanging up there because, like, it's in, it's in a coffee shop that I like. And... Um, you know, and like people who go there or people that I know, like we all go to the same coffee shop and stuff. It's a really cool coffee shop. Um, so for me, that that's what that's about. But definitely at the coffee shop, I can sell these. Uh, I can put prices on them. I have no idea what prices to put on these and stuff, but that would be part of the, that's part of the stress. Honestly, I have to figure out what to price them. I have to put them in frames. I have to hang them up, all of that stuff. I have to worry about all that. Um, so the other thing, the, um, the horse show that's uh that i don't i don't think that like if somebody wanted to buy those it would be one of those things where they just kind of reach out and contact me because they're interested i don't think that i don't think it'd be appropriate to put price tags on them in that venue that venue would be more like um i don't know like you decorated like an office or something like that or 
you know, theoretically a step down from like a museum or something like that. It, it's not, it's not like they're there to sell. Yeah. So I, I think it would be kind of not, not exactly appropriate to go off and put price tags on them and stuff, but I, I don't know. Like I, I'm going to have to play that one by ear, but in my mind, in my mind, it's just for display. Which is totally cool because, like, <laughs> again, I'm not. I don't think I'm cut out to actually sell art. To be honest with you guys, I, I'm I'm having more fun creating this stuff. And the whole like, it's one of those things. Like um, Ryan George, he's another YouTuber. He creates these so he creates these great funny uh, videos. Like I've always looked up to him. Um, is like a comedian. So he, uh, he created this video where he drew like a doodle and um, uh, all of his friends, it, it's kind of a joke, it, it, it's a bit, but he, like all of his friends asked him like, yo, you monetize that yet? Like, and, and the joke was that like, if you have a hobby nowadays, <laughs> everybody wants you to like, or the first question people ask is like, hey, you making money off of that and stuff? I mean, what's wrong with just having a hobby, right? Like, why does it always have to be about, you know, like making money or, or selling stuff like I feel like you can just do art for the sake of doing art. I'm doing this big horn sheep because I think it'll look cool, you know, and I think it'll look nice in my collection. Like if if parts of my collection sell at some point, hey, that's a bonus and everything. But honestly, some of some of the parts in my collection have already disappeared. And I kind of lament that, you know, like it's like, man, I want I, I, I wanted it as a collection, you know, I, I'd rather have the collection than, you know, whatever, like, few, few dollar bills I might get out of it. But the, the ones that I let go were to good people who I know that there'll be good homes and stuff like that. So it's, it's almost like, I don't know, a parent having to let their kids go off to college or something like that. <laughs> I know I'm a weird guy. I, I know it, it's a it's a weird way to look at your art, but it is like, oh, it's grown up and now it's going out into the world to hang out on somebody's wall. That's the way I see it, or that's the way I like to see it. You know, when your kids go off to college, you it's not about how much you're selling your kids to the world for. No, it's about your kids maturing and going off to college. You know, that's the way I look at the art. Is the art mature enough to go out into the world? And the answer is, yeah, I don't know. Some of these pieces, they can look kind of nice. I'm, I'm pretty proud of them. I'm proud to put them out there. Other things that I work on, not so much. I wasn't very happy with my, my kitty picture the other day. I'm, I'm going to have to redo that one. I'm going to have to put Archer on the, uh, the list for... Uh, Oh, what, what was I calling that art? Something like um, redemption, redemption art. Yeah, there we go. Sorry, I I lost my train of thought there for a moment. But yeah, I'm gonna have to put my uh, my archer cat on the uh, on the redemption list. Um, somebody mentioned on that channel. Uh, why don't I do like wet on wet? with the um the watercolor and stuff. I think I'm going to give that a shot next time. Like I'm used to doing more detailed stuff like like this where um I don't really do the whole you know, like down here this is an example of wet and then like, you know, when you add stuff to it it just kind of blots in and and everything like it um that's cool and uh that's probably like appropriate for watercolor. It doesn't work so well with the coffee, and I think that's why I don't do it all that much. But it is something I need to practice, so I'm going to do that. Jeremy, all the animals you have done in coffee can be found in Wyoming. Yes, that is intentional. I am trying to do, um, I'm specifically trying to do wildlife that you can find in the United States woodlands. Um, and it's painful, too, because there are some other animals I would like to do. I, I just want to be a wildlife artist. I, I think that that's really my calling. I, I dabble in portraits. I dabble in, like, geek stuff like Mandalorian or, or comic book characters or something like that. But um, 
you know, for now, at, at least, I, I really am enjoying doing the, um, the wildlife art. And uh, it, it's kind of painful because um, I do pick and choose what wildlife I want to do. And um, hey, uh, Creative Boredom, how's it going, man? Um, yeah, and the uh, wildlife that I've been picking is uh, specifically, you know, because I'm hanging these in a coffee shop in Kentucky, it'd be wildlife that, you know, Kentucky people can relate to. Now, I, th I think anybody can relate to like a tiger or, or like a lion or like an elephant or something like that. But I'm I'm trying to avoid those for now, uh, and then maybe like later on I'll start tackling those after I've completed the series of uh, wildlife that you might find out in the uh, in, in the Rocky Mountains. Not specifically in the Rocky Mountains, like just like in the North America woodlands, although most of them are like ones you would find in the Rocky Mountains. Like, I, I don't know if there's any squirrels out in the Rocky Mountains, but at some point I'm going to do, like, a, uh, a squirrel. Like, if they're paying attention with them. Um, it's going good. How's it going for you? It's going great. And it's going great. It is a... It's a... I dare say a better week than I've had in a while. I've been super busy a lot. So... Um... I don't know. Like, I don't even know what happened to January and February. And, uh, you know, we're, we're like midway through February now. And I, I don't even know. Like, it feels like New Year's Day was like last week for me. I don't know. That's how fast days are coming off the calendar. And I don't like it. I, I like skipping over the winter months because winter sucks. But also, it's like, I don't like how fast things are going. I just want to slow things down. And... I, I kind of want, I want that for everybody. I want, I want us all to be able to just slow things down. It seems like things just go way too fast these days. So if I had one wish for everybody, it would be like, can we get things a little slower? And I don't know, maybe that's just based on my perspective of how things are. But to me, it's just uh, so fast. Slow down, buddy. And, um, you know, if I can pull that off, if I can get things going a little bit slower, be super happy. And I, I feel like this week has been a step in the right direction on that. I like this little guy already. This is looking cool. All right, so I'm going to move back to my... Um, so um, just to narrate what I'm doing, you know, most of you guys have seen these things. Um, at this point, I'm kind of putting down like a, a like a base layer that I'll come back and add some detail to. But this is um, this is necessary for uh, uh, coffee paintings, or at least the way I do it. Uh, maybe other people, you know, their experience varies a little bit. But for me, you have to kind of put down this uh, this kind of starter layer so that other uh, layers can kind of like be added on top of that. Uh, it kind of forms like a little crust that you can add detail over. Get this kind of going up here. This is going to be tough here because I need to create some sort of separation between this. Um, I'll have to work on this, but I need this to be like either a little bit lighter or a little bit darker than the horn to create that separation. Oh, and I, um, I am going to have to dump this shirt pretty soon. Uh, Olivia has gone through all of her treatment, basically. And I think the uh, the only thing at this point is that she's on like medication or something, um, and and then I think that's it. Um, she had posted something about that today. I don't know specifically when I should start wearing a different shirt, um, but the idea was that I would wear this shirt until she was better, and I think she's better. I don't want to jinx anything by like <laughs> changing outfits too soon, uh, but yeah, I I think that that's where we're at. I think I think it's. I mean, I don't want to jinx anything, so I, I'm not. I'm just gonna leave it at that. I just, at some point soon, I might be wearing a different shirt. Oh, thank you, Tom. Yeah, like I, I think the bighorn it looks really cool in this, um, in this style. I think all of these look really cool in coffee. Like it's almost like these animals were made to be done in coffee. I don't know if anybody else is doing that. Like. There are people who do coffee art. 
and they have different subjects. Most people just try copy art like once, like there's no, there's not a lot of like, oh, I, I work mainly in copy. Uh, I haven't seen that many people out there doing that. Um, and then of the people who do copy art on the regular, like a lot of them seem to be like landscapers and, um, or people who, who do like, I don't know, like band pictures or something like that. They. I don't see too many where they, they've just picked something like, I don't know, like wildlife and just kind of ran with it. Uh, I've seen some people try to do like portraits with, uh, with coffee. All of those are fine. Maybe at some point I'll try a portrait and coffee, but I don't know. It seems to be really suited to these animals. So, I don't know. Maybe I'll be the foremost coffee artist of animals. As long as I don't look on the internet to see what else is out there, I can believe whatever I want. I am I'm the only guy out there doing wildlife coffee art. <laughs> That's what I'm going to choose to believe. Don't tell me any different. <laughs> What's your favorite copy painting animal that you've made so far? That's a great question. So, um, I think, I, I think I'm going to say it's uh, that first horse I did, um, just because that's what started these other ones. And um, I don't think I'd be doing these other ones if I hadn't done that and gotten kind of like, well, first off, the response has been amazing. Like people who don't usually comment on my other art, I don't know if they, they secretly think my other art sucks. <laughs> that's probably the case. Um, but anyway, people who, who watch my, uh, my shorts uh, on like TikTok, for example, um, but haven't commented on any before, suddenly decide to comment or send me an email or, or something like that saying my uh, copy pictures are great. Uh, so that kind of response has been overwhelming. And um, I wouldn't it, like, I wouldn't have that without that first uh, horse one. So I, I would say that that's my favorite. Um, uh, from a difficulty standpoint, I'm gonna say the owl probably was the most challenging just because of the type of detail that was put into it and how long that took and everything. Um, I think, uh, I think the chipmunk looked cool. Like for some reason that chipmunk kind of came out really, really nice. Like there's a lot of detail in that chipmunk that I, I was surprised with. Um, I would say the same with the, the owl, like the detail that made it into the owl. That's pretty surprising. Um, Oh, I totally forgot I did that rabbit one. That rabbit one went to my mom. So that's an example, uh, kid, if you're still in the room, uh, where um, uh, I create something and, and then somebody wants it and I can't really say no. So, like, um, I, I created that that wild rabbit one and my mom's birthday was uh, last week and she wanted it for her birthday. So I'm like, oh, okay, well, there you go. So that's no longer part of my collection of wildlife. It's now <laughs> hanging in my mom's uh, on my mom's wall. But she's worth it, I guess. She turned 70, so if, if she wanted my art. Um, but actually, so like the whole reason I mentioned the um, the rabbit is, uh, <laughs> coincidentally, that's my least favorite. Just because like, it's a cool rabbit, but there's not like a lot of detail in it. So it's, it's not like there's a lot to work with, if that makes sense. Um, I'm starting to like this, uh, this ram here, which, uh, I think it's going to turn out pretty good. If I can get the details that I want to in, into this RAM and get some of the um, the features going that I want, I think that this will be a, a contender for my favorite. I kind of like the buffalo too. Like I can see the buffalo or the bison that I did not being anybody's favorite, but I kind of like it. I, I, I kind of like it a lot, actually. And, um, you know, the bison are kind of dear to my own heart because, like, I never saw one until, like, just a couple of years ago. And now I see them everywhere. And I think that's just so cool. Because you, uh, you watch movies like Dances with Wolves and uh, those guys were disappearing off the, <laughs> the face of the earth. It's, uh, it's nice that they're making a comeback. So little things like that, you know.
like that has nothing to do with anything um specific related to the style of art or like the subject matter or anything like that but just the kind of conservation efforts of those uh those buffaloes to do a picture oh that reminds me of something else sorry man a lot to talk about this week sorry i'm just on a roll today um first let me check the chat see what you guys talk about I remember um dad back in the day saving old pieces of wood i never got it uh enough to where dad comes and takes my wood to make stuff that's cool hi jeremy nice big horn hello everyone hey okay larry appreciate you stopping in um so the other thing the other project oh this is a big one guys like this is going to be this is going to be my breakout moment okay so this is where you're going to be like oh, dang jeremy made it jeremy actually did something that is perfect for him all right all right, so check this out. There is um, Maker's Mark, who makes the bourbon that I love to drink, is sponsoring an art competition, kind of an art competition. It, it, I don't, it's kind of a competition, but I don't know if they would call it a competition or whatever. Anyway, I got an email from LexArt, which is um, a local art uh, community type thing, and um, they were doing a call for artists. And what it is is that they give you a blank Maker's Mark bottle, all right? On it is a label saying what kind of proof and all the stuff legally that it has to say for the uh, the bourbon that's going into it. And then it's sealed, Maker's Mark has that, that red wax seal. So all of that, you can't touch. That all has to stay intact. The rest of the bottle is yours to decorate however you want. And here's where it becomes a competition. Uh, only 99 of these bottles are accepted so you have to submit some of your artwork and you have to submit a plan for what you're planning on doing to this bottle. Uh, there's only 99 artists that are going to get a shot at this because there's only 99 bottles. Uh, the bottles themselves uh, go up for auction. I think you get like a hundred bucks or something if, if, for like doing the work. Um, but it, it's not really about that. It's, it's, it's just the fact that you got accepted because there's a limited number of slots. So the problem is I think there's a ton of artists on that email list so i don't know how stiff the competition is but i'm going to give it a shot anyway i am going to try to decorate a maker's mark bottle of bourbon um because like i'm the guy right i drink bourbon on this show i do art and stuff it's like um you guys secretly I, it contains no cat food <laughs> so that's great bro uh yeah i have to add that to the label but um no i feel like i feel like like this is my moment right this is like out of all the art projects I could possibly take a lot and take on, this is the one that says Jeremy, right? Like, I feel like this is my shot where if I don't get accepted to it, I missed, I missed some sort of window. I'm not going to, I'm not going to like cry about it. I'm not going to like bemoan my existence. If I don't get it, I'll just, I'll just shoot for the next one or whatever. But I think maybe these coffee pictures would look cool on a bottle of uh maker's mark. So, Anyway, everybody's saying congratulations and all that stuff, or that's awesome and everything. Remember, I haven't I haven't submitted anything. I haven't been accepted. So um, change all of that to that's awesome to uh, I'm pulling for you, Jeremy, and then send out like those positive thoughts that we've talked about in the past. Um, so like, yeah, so you guys, you guys like, we'll put this out in the universe and make it happen. But I'm definitely submitting. Uh, I think I've got until March 1st to come up with an idea. I mean, I'm just going to submit some of these uh, these wildlife pictures because, like, I think that those would look good on, like, a bourbon model is, like, the base for it. But also, I don't know if it'd be enough. Because there's, like, there's, like, some really stiff competition. I should show you guys some of the work that was done the last time they did this. But they, they auctioned these, um, these bottles off for charity. So, like... I don't know, the bottles end up going for like 700 bucks or something like that. And that all goes to like some sort of charity or whatever, but it's still kind of cool, you know? Yeah, so yeah, thanks uh, Lorraine. That's the whole reason why I, I, I remember to uh, mention it is because I was talking about the bison. The bison would look really cool on a Maker's Mark bottle, I think. And I think it turned out well enough to where like I mean, obviously, I would have to repaint the bison, but I'm I'm definitely submitting that as an example of like my type of art. I can't see them saying no. <laughs> like that's how confident I am. Like that's a millennial confidence there. Um, if they say no, it's just because they got too many submissions. Otherwise, 
how can you say no to like a nice coffee painting on a maker's mark, a mark bottle? It's brilliant. It, it, it just, you know, it just makes so much sense. So in my mind, I've already made up that like, it's not because I suck as an artist that I'm not going to get it. It's just that they got too many submissions and, and there was like other people who, who were slightly better. That's all. That that's the excuse I'm going to use it when I don't get it, but no, I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot for it. Like this would be the first art competition I've entered, so I think that would be cool. And um, you know, largely due to you guys, that's where I get the confidence to be able to pull this off. I you know I wouldn't be able to do it if you guys weren't watching this and cheering me on. So I, if I if I do get the uh, I guess. I guess it would be considered a commission. I don't know what you would call it, but uh, I'm going to call it commission. So, like, if I get that commission, I'm I'm considering that a community win. I think that's at least as much you guys as it is me. But I think that'll be awesome. Like I said, that's that's the first project that I've seen that you know, <laughs> it's like I was kind of born for it. It's like I drink I drink Maker's Mark. I like, and they're asking for a label. I can do this. I can do this. I've actually made some, um, some wine labels in the past, uh, digital, digital art. Like it's not this kind of art stuff, but, but, uh, my brother, he, uh, he makes wine and, uh, I made some labels for his, uh, his wine bottles. So I feel like I can pull this off. So like next, well, I, I guess it'd be like two weeks before I found out. So like in two weeks when I'm saying, nah, it, not, it didn't pan out, like, I don't know. I don't know what my excuse would be because I, like right now I feel super confident. I'm going to pull this off. It's going to be great. 99 bottles of making mark on the wall, 99 bottles of it. Yeah. I think it was, um, I think it was like 91 or something. I don't know. Like I don't have the email in front of me, but it seems it seems pretty cool. Um, it's a little bit like this thing they called a uh, horse mania that they do around here, where they um, like they do these like every couple of years. So the next time that happens, I'm definitely hopping on that. But horse mania is kind of similar. They have these sculptures of horses, and and they're all like white, and they're just like fiberglass sculptures. And they um, they commission artists to uh, paint them, and then they auction them off for charity. But then these things end up uh, going in front of people's businesses, things like that. They're all life size horses. So if you can imagine painting horses, um, that that would be really cool. That that's the other art project that I think I'd be interested in. Then then like a mural, a mural is definitely on my bucket list. Like just to be able to do the side of a building or something, that would be awesome. So like, you know, it's not about like selling art. Uh, it's more about like, what, where can I go with this stuff? Like what, what, what's the, what's the upper limit on things that I can accomplish here? That's what, uh, that's what I'm mostly interested in. Like, can I, can I get, can I get a bottle of Maker's Mark with my work on it? That would be awesome. Like, I think, I think they do give you like a hundred bucks if, um, if you uh if you're accepted so if these things go for like seven hundred dollars i'll just buy my own bottle <laughs> so that i can keep it that would be cool because i'll drink it i mean i, I like makers more actually i wouldn't drink it i would probably put it up somewhere i still have the uh wine bottle that i made for my brother's uh wine label i got one of those bottles unopened But yeah, I think that'd be kind of cool. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Lorraine. Thanks, Bill. Thanks because I can. Yeah. So, um, it, well, um, so it's one bottle uh, because I can, and um, you have to submit beforehand what your plan is for the bottle. Uh, but then, obviously, you ha if you're accepted, you get the blank bottle. Um, however that works i don't know like is the entire bottle blank except for that label i don't i don't really know um but then you're like left to your own devices to actually do the the work right so if i'm accepted guess where we're gonna do that work we're gonna do it right here unless there's some rule against doing that or something 
Like if there's something where it says, um, you know, I can't do it live. Guess what? We're making the Maker's Mark bottle live. We're gonna do it as a as a community, guys. It's going to be odd. So I don't know if it's going to be coffee painting. I don't know if I, that's the pitch I'm gonna give them. Um, cause like maybe, but also coffee mixed with bourbon. I don't know if that's like a mixed kind of weird thing. I'm going to have to give that some thought. I don't know if I'm going to pitch it as like, check out these pictures I did. They just happen to be monochrome pictures. Or if I'm actually going to tell them like, these are done in coffee and that's what I plan to do to your bottle. Uh, maybe a coffee painting of Big Red to go with the uh, wax seal. Big Red. Oh, like um, that's a uh, secretariat. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Like, um, I, I don't know. I don't know if you have to license the use of secretariat. I wonder if that's the thing like like is there a legacy to secretariat where you can't use secretariat in like promotional things i bet you there is to be honest with you like i don't even have to look that up i i know for because you don't see a bunch of secretariat stuff out there and you would you you think there would be if if there wasn't some sort of licensing thing involved in that but yeah, like uh, Secretariat on the bottle would be awesome. I bet you there is. Because it'd be like, it's kind of like human athletes kind of have these like weird contracts and stuff over their likenesses. Like I can't sit here and, well, I, I could. I, I could sit here and do a portrait of like, say, Michael Jordan or something like that. And I could do it from like, like a... um you know, just for fun or something like that. But I couldn't do it from like a commercial standpoint because Michael Jordan is like, I don't know, like he's, his face is like basically like copyrighted. I don't know how that works. There you go, be a maverick, just do what you want. <laughs> yeah, thanks kid, That that's a good point. Um, you know, the coffee painting uh, might set me apart. I mean, that was kind of my strategy for doing like an art show. Like at some point I was going to go out and do like an art show where I'm showing off these coffee paintings and um, I was going to have like a little, like, like a little coffee maker there and everything like that. And yeah, the, the whole idea is that um, my coffee paintings are different than everybody else's who, who does like watercolor or something like that. And also you can have a cup of coffee at my booth. That was my strategy there. I don't know increasingly it becomes less and less likely that this year I will be doing a, um, like an art show, even though that was one of my goals, just because of the, um, the cost of, uh, you know, getting a, a tent, you have to get a tent, you have to pay the fee. Like even the small art show around here is like 250 bucks just to, just to show up. And then you have to have your own tent and you have to have like walls inside your tent and, you have to have all your stuff framed and hanging up and you probably would need some prints to sell to make up that 250 bucks you're out. So like, that's a lot of stuff. I don't know if I can get all that together this year, but you know, hanging up in a coffee shop, I can do that or hanging up at that, um, that horse show or hell ending up on maker's mark bottle. That sounds great. Like, Man, I so hope I, I get that. That that's just gonna make my entire year. That'll be the first like legit work. That's how you know you're an artist when you make it on a maker's mark bottle. <laughs> it's one thing for your mom to like your bunny rabbit that you painted. It's a different thing when maker's mark says, "Yeah, we want your uh, we we want your stuff on my bottle." That would be cool. And then then it doesn't matter like you know like you could literally retire at that point and have accomplished something you can be like this is the last painting i'm ever gonna do because where else are you gonna go from there you know like it's basically like i don't know like where i'm at now being on a label like for a maker's mark bottle and then being like leonardo da vinci himself and hanging up in the louvre or something like that There's, those are the only three steps you know so it's like, where else are you gonna go? But uh, like, that's basically the, uh, the yeah, that that's the pinnacle. You can't go any higher than that. I'm joking, of course, but yeah, that that sounds like fun.
Thanks because they can. I'm I'm not I'm not delusional. I know that the competition's going to be stiff, but it'll be it'll be fun to uh, give it a shot. And I think it's worth giving it a shot, even if uh, even if it doesn't pan out. I mean, there's probably other things that I haven't considered that might matter. Like, I don't know, some of these, uh, some of these type things are, they're juried, which means like, you know, like there's some jumping behind the, to, like political stuff. I don't know. Like, I don't know. Some of these things are like, maybe you have to have gone to art school or something. I don't know. I don't know if there's like some of those type of criteria. I don't think there is for this. Uh, I think it's like open to anybody, but yeah, some of these jury type things, they, they are political where, you know, they're not just open to everybody. I'm trying to like talk myself out of being excited now. Thanks, Richard. I think the world needs more people like you. Coffee granules for the top, red Kool-Aid for granules for the bottom. You guys really want me to try that Kool-Aid sometime, don't you? Cause I, I, I feel like you guys have mentioned that several times. Yeah. Each time I do one of these copy pictures, uh, somebody brings up the Kool-Aid. We, we should just give it a shot. See how it goes. You know? right. So we're, we're starting to get, we're starting to get a Ram in here. So this is cool. Um, I'm going to get some really thin coffee kind of fill in this body a little bit more now that we got some um got some of this stuff drying here so i feel like this would kind of come back around here a bit and walk through here and i do think i want to bring it a little bit over here not too much at this point i want to kind of i think this i want this to kind of be light over here because i don't i don't want this to be like a big distraction for the viewer but also i feel like you need to know where the body of this uh big horn is so just kind of get that in here as a the you know a bit of a suggestion so like down here there could be a little bit just kind of rough that in a bit and then i'll probably add a lot more let's see this should be dry enough to where i can kind of just get a little bit more of this stuff going so this stuff I do want to dry kind of dark, right? So this is what kind of gives you that shadowy um, value. So I kind of want I kind of want it to come down. You guys have seen these pictures enough to where you kind of seen how that kind of works. This may not dry as dark as I want it to, in which case I'll just come back with more layers. But you just keep piling those layers up. Uh, what type of coffee am I using? That's a great question. It's been asked before. It is, it is from the dollar store. It literally says coffee. So the brand is coffee. <laughs> like, <laughs> and I just spilled it all on the floor. That's okay. I'll, uh, I'll clean that up later. But, um, yeah, always make a mess. Um, yeah, that's how generic it is. Um, uh, it's, a uh, it's, it doesn't even have a brand. It's not Folgers or anything like that. So remind me to clean that up before the dogs start getting high on coffee over here. Use black paper. You can uh, paint with uh, Coke. Uh, yeah, Coca-Cola. Yeah, this is a family friendly show, uh, uh, Bill. Uh, so we know you you mean Coca-Cola. Yes, uh, that, that white Coca-Cola, the, the, the new stuff that they just invented. But no, I've done, um, I've done a uh, pastel, uh, white chalk, uh, or like uh, white charcoal, um, pictures on that uh, black paper that, that works out really well. Uh, 
Um, done, done a couple of those actually, and uh, I actually enjoy doing those. Uh, white charcoal on black paper turns out really nice. It's one of my favorite go-to uh, styles. Now, of course, that's what you really meant, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> you meant pastel chalk. Um, I, I give Bill a hard time. He, he's a... Uh, I don't know how old you are, Bill, but I, I want to say you're around my dad's age. And uh, I, I have to think, I have to think like my, how I, how my dad thinks, basically. My, uh, my dad's old enough to just uh, realize that like, there is no sense um, trying to, uh, like if, he, if, if people don't accept you, then that's their problem. That That's how, that's my dad's outlook on life. He's not trying to, uh, Win any approval from people. But we like Bill on this show. Bill's pretty cool. Bill's a, you're in Kentucky now, right? Like, did you find a move? Be 66 in Easter. Cool. <laughs> I don't know if you deleted that from the chat, but now I don't see it. I think it was Bill who, who said that. Anyway, whatever. 66 on Easter? Yeah, so my dad's a little bit older. But you guys are around the same age. My dad's, um, he's in his 70s. Oh, you're still in Colorado? That's cool. Um... What flavor is the coffee? It's just regular coffee. It's not like, um, it's just regular instant coffee. And I've talked uh, um, about the process before about why I use the instant. Um, you could technically do this with, um, with other types of coffee, like straight up espresso if you wanted to, it, but you would need some sort of like, some sort of thickening agent or something like that because it, the more watered down it gets, the, the harder it is to actually get any kind of like a pigment out of this, which obviously is like what you need to create like um, a super dark value. Like here in the eyes, like it's not there yet, but this needs to be basically this dark, uh, this dark or more. Um, you're not going to get that out of like regular espresso. You're going to have to like add something to it. Um, so... The good good thing about the instant coffee is that you can kind of control the amount of water you, you're using. So uh, you can control how much water you're using. So that's a step in the right direction. And then you can also control, um, you know, like layering over and over and over. And that is where you're going to end up getting your your um, your dark pigments because uh, I mentioned how the more you work with this, the, the, it starts uh, developing kind of like this little syrupy consistency. That syrupy consistency is what you use for your like really dark values. So like, for example, I can come in and kind of dab in like this dark eye area. And um, yeah, you're not going to be able to do that with other types of uh, coffee. So there's like you know, there's some cheats there a little bit. Like, I can see somebody getting, like, really um, particular about things where they're like, oh, that's not real coffee. If you're going to do a coffee picture, you need to do it with such and such kind of coffee or something. And, hey, you know, maybe you can make that work. I'm just saying that this is a lot easier. Like, you can make espresso work, but you're also going to jump through some hoops to get the darker values. You can get the light values easy. That's not a big deal. Oh, your house skill um, is fairly dead? I'm sorry. Man. Fairly dead as in not happening, or dead as in, well, I guess there's not too many ways you can say it sounds like it's dead. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry about that. Your kid turned 44 yesterday. Oh, that's cool. Congratulations. Uh, little Gorman, 
I guess. <laughs> I don't think you've ever mentioned his name. We'll just call him Little Gorman. I think this is looking cool. I was thinking about doing a live stream um, what was this Sunday during the uh, Super Bowl. Just to, I don't know, just to do it. Did you guys watch the Super Bowl? It was basically the Taylor Swift show. <laughs> oh, the realtor is not communicating. I mean, here in Kentucky, though, like that might just mean that that, that may not mean that it's dead because like around here, uh, realtors and lawyers just don't communicate. Like you can send them emails and they just won't get back with you. You have to basically go knock on their door. So, I mean, it may be dead, but I wouldn't give it up. You see a lot of images in this painting, uh, Richard? That's cool. That's one of the great things about this kind of like um, abstraction. Like up here, it, it's, it's like more detailed, but as you start moving away from that detailed area, it does get like a little more abstracted. And um, that's where like you start seeing things. Um, that whole periodolia thing. But, you know, that's not a bad thing that us artists kind of rely on that. Just kind of moving this little blotch here a little bit. So that I ended up with like quite a lot of coffee on the floor. That kind of sucks. At least I didn't spill coffee water all over me. Then again, I feel like I do that quite a bit. So this is another area where things need to get like a lot darker, but. You gotta build the layers for that. Your kid ain't little. He's a six four. Oh wow, six four. Yeah, that's a big guy. Uh, we'll call him Big Gorman. <laughs> How tall are you? Like, I I feel like you're not that tall. But yeah, six four. Uh, Green Beret works at a secret military test facility. You probably shouldn't be saying that on the live internet. It's not so secret anymore. a little bit can't say it's a secret and then announce it on the internet uh my whole five subscribers <laughs> like <laughs> now there's more there's uh i don't know there's like 12 people watching that's not bad so certainly for a tuesday you know I like I like streaming on Tuesdays. I've, I've done Wednesdays and it do, doesn't feel as right. Tuesdays feel like the right day. I might like if I switch things up, I would maybe add days instead of subtract. I, I would um, maybe add on a Monday or something like that. So I got to kind of like so to finish off this form here, I get some kind of need a little bit of something here just to separate it from the white area and i feel like the same with this ear here just a little bit of something and then even up here even though it's got to be super light it's a little bit of something coming around oops bring that up bring that around just to separate it from the white background I do like this paper. It's hard to see because of the the particular lights I've got going on here, but it, it's it's kind of like an off-white. It's um not quite a cream color paper, but it's definitely not pure white, you know. And I like that because um allows you to uh it looks really good with the copy. Like I've got other paper that I've uh, I've done some of these on for like different sizes. Like I've got nine by twelve paper that I did that rabbit on and then I've got I think it's 12 by 12 paper that I did the chipmunk on you're actually paying more uh, attention to the drawing than chat tonight oh I appreciate that yeah um, the act of flinging a blog of, of coffee and convincing to sketch a sheep is captivating man you're truly a master hey I appreciate that hater you, you are like the king of compliments 
I don't know if I deserve that, but I'll take it, and I appreciate it. Um, don't forget about your 12 loyals when you're big and famous. <laughs> hey, look, if I get to keep that, I, I don't think I get to keep that bottle of Maker's Mark, but if I do, every one of you guys get a shot. Like, we're just going to open it up and, like, have a big old party. You guys are going to have to com come to Kentucky, but beyond that, I'll be supplying the bourbon. No, I mean, you know, all joking aside, I, I think it'd be a fun project. I, I think it's worth um, trying, you know, because, like, here's the thing. Some of it, like, there's different ways to look at it. Like, again, I, I started by uh, commenting on that Ryan George uh, video uh, where he does that bit about, like, um, you know, as soon as he does a does a drawing everybody's like hey you're gonna monetize that um that that's where people are at you know like every every hobby like whatever you do it doesn't matter you you knit t-shirts or not t-shirt i guess you wouldn't knit a t-shirt you knit you knit a sweater or whatever and somebody's like hey man you're gonna put that up on etsy and stuff maybe you just knitted a sweater because you were you were cold or something or like i don't know you had a family member that wanted a sweater and you thought it'd make a nice gift you don't have to like monetize everything this is something i've been thinking about recently so in terms of like, what are my goals as an artist, right? Like, uh, what are things I'm trying to accomplish? This is a little bit different than last year. Last year, the goal was just to get better at doing what I'm doing, which is still the main goal. But also, I wanted to kind of switch it up this year and, and add to it and, um, you know, augment that, that main goal with some other goals, right? So like, show up in an art show or, or something like that. Um, so I toyed with the idea of like, I don't know, trying to sell some of this stuff, but I don't, I don't think that's where I'm at. I really don't think that's where I'm at. Instead, there's other ways you can explore your, your hobby, right? So like if you're an athlete and you're, I don't know, like on a high school football team or something like that, you don't play high school football uh, to make a career out of it or to make a dollar, you know, like that Friday night that you're playing out there on the field or something. It's not like you're walking home with a hundred dollar paycheck or anything like that. I actually, I don't know. I was never in sports, so maybe they do get paid, but I don't think they do. Um, so like, what are other ways that you can explore your interests? And to me for art, it's, it's about getting displayed, right? So like, and it's different, uh, being displayed on the internet, uh, on the internet. It's great, but like, and, you know, I like being displayed on the internet. I like having a venue like this. I like having uh, Instagram and TikTok and other places to show um, the artwork and stuff. But to have a tangible, real-world showing, I think that that's cool, you know? And that that's where my goals are kind of centered around now. So, like, I forget why I was saying this, but, um, yeah, so, like, to get this, uh, to get this on a Maker's Mark bottle, that that is definitely like who cares that you get a hundred bucks for it it's more about you're on a maker's mark bottle how awesome is that so anyway those type of um those type of things i think i'm going to focus on this year it's like you know not just that one competition because you know it, there's things that are outside of your control like maybe maybe the other people who entered are just better than you and you know that's fine you, there's nothing you can do about that um, you shouldn't beat yourself up over it because like a lot of art is subjective. So maybe, maybe the artwork you submitted just isn't what the corporation had in mind for their bottles. So that's a factor, you know, like you think wildlife really matches the maker's mark brand. I think it does. Um, but then they look at it and like, well, you know, we've done, we've done bison before. We're not trying for bison. We're trying for something that is a little more edgy or something like, well, I'm not going to do an edgy picture. So you know, that's going to have to go to that other artist or, you know, like I actually believe in things like, um, you know, diversity and, and things like that. So like if they're looking for a particular kind of artist, right? Well, that's, you know, I can't, my art is one thing, but I can't be a different person. So if they're looking for like a, a particular type of person, I, you know, I can't do anything about that. So, but anyway, I, my point is, I think that there's enough of these type of things out there where I can just enter a bunch of them, you know? I don't, I don't care if like I, I get picked up or whatever. I think that'd be a cool goal. I think that's a lot better than saying, hey, I'm gonna sell five pieces of art this year or something. That That's a terrible goal. I think uh, 
it's a, a lot better to just get your stuff shown and everything. Make a name for yourself. It'll be awesome. 12 Orioles. <laughs> oh, wait, guess what? The viewers are down to nine, so you're going to have to give up on that 12. It's down to nine now. They don't like my tirade or whatever I was talking about. I don't know. The Buffalo beat three bulls and cracked their skulls. You mean the 12 Orioles, 12 Apostles? <laughs> there is a core group of people who come in and watch this, and, you know, you guys are awesome. I appreciate it. But, yeah, every week, um, you know, kid... Um, you know, Hater is a new one. Uh, like, Hater's come on in the last couple of weeks. And, um, you know, Richard Richard was here on my first stream way back in the day. Um, you know, Bill's been a regular. And Lorraine, she comes in all the time. And Tom, you, you guys are the best. I don't know if you guys were just that bored. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you guys really like art. The frustrating thing about this copy is it does take a little while to get these uh these things in because you do have to you're it's almost like glazing in layers and each time like it, it does come together but uh it's it's kind of slow kind of want a little bit of shadows through here Let's smooth that out a little bit You know, the new one you were made uh, 32 years ago. I just mean, like, a new person who's uh, who's popped in here recently. I do think I want to go down to New Orleans um, at some point for Mardi Gras. I know Mardi Gras is overrated, but it's uh it's still like one of those one of those uh, bucket list items. Like um, Times Square for New Year's, I know that that would be terrible experience. Like you'd be out there in the cold, it'd be crowded, it'd be noisy. I know that I would not enjoy it very much, but also it's a bucket list item. You, you know, I feel like you have to do it. I mean, you don't have to do it, but I kind of want to do all those things, you know. I want to, I want to do all the, all the things, including Times Square on New Year's Eve, even though I think it would suck. Um, I think I don't think Mardi Gras would suck. I, I think that'd be fun. I like events like there's not that many of them, um, but I like events where they let you walk around with an open container, and you just have a good time. Um, that's one of the things I liked about. Um, las vegas when i went there i don't know if you're really supposed to but i didn't see anybody who cared but you could get like one of those um was it 32 ounce yardsticks or something and just walk around on the strip i i love that kind of thing um so that's what i did a lot when i uh went to las vegas for like uh like uh conventions uh I would I would walk the strip a lot. I'm not I'm not much of a gambler, so there wasn't really much else for me to do in Vegas. <laughs> I mean, I I don't mind games of chance. I'm just not very good at them. Um, the only games of chance are the ones where it's truly outside of your control. Like I would suck at um, uh, like blackjack or something where you actually have to make a decision. Oh, thanks, kid. I appreciate that. I like how this is turning out. Uh, these bighorn sheep, they're just beautiful creatures. The, and the uh, the horns, I love that. Um, uh, what, what is the zodiac symbol that has these horns like this? Um, Taurus? I don't know. Like, often, often you see this kind of, um, these type of horns on people, like in art. I love these horns. What was I saying? Oh, yeah, yeah, in Vegas, like, I, I'm not very good at games of chance. Especially the ones where you have to actually participate in the decision-making, like, I don't know, like, poker or, or, like, blackjack, where you have to actually decide. I'm not very good at that. Something like roulette, where you just kind of put your money on a, 
on something and hope for the best, I can do that. Because that's just pure luck. Yeah, I'm glad this one's your favorite. Uh, yeah, the eyes. So the eyes are going to, like, this right here is going to be a little bit. There we go. Actually, that's pretty good right there. And then get a little bit more darkness in there. And then, yeah, it's a good start. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> It's funny, whenever somebody mentions something, I, I like immediately go to that area and try to fix it. <laughs> like, even though it's not really broke. I love the eyes. Okay, let me let me screw those eyes up real quick. <laughs> A plus. Thank you. I appreciate it, guys. Uh, Bill says, uh, game of chance is uh, buying a house. You lose the appraisal fee uh, to find out they don't have a clean title. Ah. Oh. Wow. Yeah, that sucks. I think we can probably say that, like, everything's uh, at risk. Everything's a gamble. Waking up in the morning's a gamble. You never know. I get hit by a bus. If you just stayed in bed, you wouldn't get hit by that bus. Hey, Hillary. Happy Tuesday. Happy Fat Tuesday. It's Mardi Gras. See, I, I didn't even know until today that Mardi Gras actually means uh, Fat Tuesday. I had no idea. Yeah, I may even be wrong on that, but that's what I read today. I read today that Mardi Gras actually means uh, Fat Tuesday. In fact, I wasn't sure... Like, I knew, I, I knew I was doing a stream tonight, and I thought there would be more people into Mardi Gras in here. So I thought you guys might bring it up or something. So I tried to become educated on it just today. And uh, I didn't even know that, like, I know there's a season called Carnival. And um, and all, all of this I know from watching HBO's uh, Treme, which is a great show, by the way. Like, if, if you guys are interested in music, uh, New Orleans, jazz, um, Cajun food, um, you know, foodie culture. That's a great, great show. It was on HBO a few years back after uh, Hurricane Katrina. And um, anyway, most of what I know about uh, uh, New Orleans and Mardi Gras and stuff comes from that. But anyway, I, I knew that there was a season called uh, Carnival, which started it starts sometime in January and kind of lasts until uh, midnight of tonight, Fat Tuesday. Um, and then I knew that Ash Wednesday is basically when, you know, Lent starts and you just kind of like, Kind of commit yourself to introspection things like that i kind of knew all these things but i didn't really know i didn't know marty grotman fat tuesday i didn't know shit, to be honest i didn't know anything i didn't i knew nothing <laughs> i didn't know what i didn't know <laughs> hmm. But yeah, I was um I was debating what I was going to do tonight. I I really wanted to get more coffee paintings done, so I, I I ended up going with that. But the other options was um I was going to do like a carnival mask or like a Mardi Gras mask, just to uh, you know get some color in there. I I thought I thought that'd be kind of cool. Like sometimes I look at my uh, my YouTube videos and I'm like, oh, I need more color. <laughs> Like, I might get on this black and white kick for a while and do, like, charcoal pictures, and then I'm like, oh, no, no, I, I need to do color tonight. So, I was thinking about doing, like, just uh, one of those really colorful Mar Mardi Gras masks with the feathers and everything. Tonight, this is Jeremy's crewy. I don't know. I'm not familiar with that term. What is crewy? But, um... So one of the things I learned from watching uh, Treme is, um, you know, the whole Mardi Gras Indians. Uh, so thanks, Lorraine, for bringing that up. I always thought Mardi Gras was Ash Wednesday, but apparently Mardi Gras is Fat Tuesday, which is today. And then Ash Wednesday is like the day after Mardi Gras. So all the partying's going on today. And then tomorrow, everything gets serious. Like if you're Catholic, you're, you're supposed to get like the Ash Cross and you're supposed to like give up stuff and you know 
really um, buckle down and like, I don't know. I don't know what they do. I'm not Catholic. Um, but, um, but yeah, I, all I know is that they do the fish fry. That's all I care about. But, <laughs> but tonight is the night that they're supposed to party and, and it ends at midnight. Better at uh, sculpture and carving the painting. I would love to like actually do some um, sculpting on here. Maybe I'll do that at some point. Oh, groups that organize uh, parties and stuff during carnival. Okay, Tom, that makes sense. But uh, yeah, so like uh, one of the things I learned about on Treme is the whole uh, Mardi Gras Indian culture. And they take that stuff seriously. Like the Mardi Gras Indians, um, all that big um, uh, peacockery uh, kind of fluff uh, feathers and beads and all that stuff. They work on that stuff throughout the year. As soon as one Mardi Gras ends, they start the next one. And each of those costumes that they make for those things, I mean, like hundreds of man hours into uh, making those uh, those things just for that one day. And then that one day, and then they, it's never used again. It goes into like, I don't, I don't even know where they go. Uh, I don't know if they get broken down and reused or, or something like that, but the, the costume itself is gone. And I'm talking about the big chief costumes that they do for um, Mardi Gras. That's just fascinating to me. Um, and then the people who participate in that, they're like, you know, even though it's like Mardi Gras, that they're the big chief and everything, they're, they're basically the big chief throughout the, you know, the community all the time. It's like just a big um, uh, social structure or something like that down there. It's, it's, it's pretty cool. It's really interesting. I think um, either in a former life or or someday, I don't know. Like I, I, I would live in New, in New Orleans and I would be happy down there. I just love the culture. Even though I haven't ever been there, I just love everything that I've, I've heard about it. I need to go and visit. It's, it's like a kind of a rite of passage at this point. The sheep brings back memories of a sheep that I rescued from, uh, from my father when I was, I reckon, 10 years old. My Muslim father wanted to sacrifice the sheep for his uh, yearly rituals called, uh, um, I'm going to mispronounce that, Eid? Eid? Mm. And, you, uh, and you rescued it? That's cool, man. Man, that must have been tough, too, to like go against your father like that. Congratulations. I mean, I don't know why I'm congratulating you, but uh, yeah, basically I'm saying like, yeah, <laughs> that, that is a, that's a big deal, especially at 10 years old to go against, uh, you know, what your, uh, what your father wanted. Yeah. Congratulations. You basically, uh, you know, did your own thing. Yeah. Lorraine and, and, um, and the, uh, king cake. Yeah. So like the king cake, I, I still don't understand that. Like, um, like, I understand that they put a baby, like a little plastic or ceramic or whatever baby in there. And um, if you find the baby, you're supposed to have, like, good luck. And I, I don't know, like, I guess if you're, like, maybe you might have a child in real life or something. I, I don't know. I don't know the full story there. But my question is, like, how does that become a thing? Like, who who's the first to think, like, I'm going to put a little baby, a fake baby in this cake? Like, how does that even come up? Like, I don't know. I, I assume, like, they slip it in after the cake is done. Like, because a lot of these babies are plastic. Like, you don't want a plastic baby in your cake. I don't know how that works. People are weird. Like, that's a weird tradition. And like I said, I, I, how, how does that even come about? Like, who, who's, who's the first person who thought, you know what? You know what makes this cake better? I mean, it tastes great. It, it's like a kind of a cinnamon kind of cake. Um, like, like I can see them sitting there having this like cinnamon cake and they're like, man, this is really great cake. What are we going to call it? Let's, let's call it King cake, man. That, that's a cool name. That's awesome. And everything. What else can we do to this cake to really make it special? And then one of them says, I know, why don't we put a baby in it? Why don't we put a baby in this cake? And then that cake's going to be really good. I mean, how does that, how does that happen? Like, it's such a weird thing to me. I don't know. Maybe it's not weird to you guys, but to me, that whole conversation, that whole imagined conversation I just had, just seems very odd. 
Oh, rum cake. That sounds really good. Jeremy, you can make a book about painting with coffee. That could be a thing. Yeah, I think I think that'd be kind of cool. Um, I I am keeping um, you know, digital uh, copies of uh, all these uh, all these pictures I'm doing. So even if they do find a home, I'm keeping the collection and stuff. I think it'd be kind of cool to do like a little coffee book. I think that makes a lot of sense for these pictures. So we'll we'll see how that goes. Um, if if I do make one of those, it'd be like later in the year, like after I've got a couple of these. Uh, my goal is my goal is still to knock out uh, thirty of these. You know, I I will not rest until I have thirty coffee paintings done. And um, I want to say I've got I don't know like five, six, something like that. I don't know. I lost count, but um, and by by thirty, I mean thirty that I actually have in my possession, not not including ones that I've given away or or things like that. So I I think that's a, that'd be a nice collection. Like thirty copy paintings in in this series, It'd be kind of cool. I think this is starting to come together. I know it's painstaking, and I, I know it's taking a while and stuff like that. But the, you know, some of the details are starting to come out in this, which is cool. You got some nice little pulling going on down here. I, I always love this. Um, you guys don't see it, uh, but you can see it in person. When it's really thick like this and it dries, it, it's kind of neat because it it forms these like little like ice skating rinks almost um, because like just the way it dries, it's almost like syrup and um, it leaves this kind of like smooth surface, especially if it pulls like this. Now, this will probably dry a little bit different, like some of this will probably be dark, but some of it probably will not be there in the morning. Um, Anyway, point is, it, it leaves these like cool little like um, smooth surfaces, almost like a like a skating rink or something like that. Kind of neat. Like if you were like a little tiny ant and you liked <laughs> skating on coffee, you would be able to. Yeah, Lorraine, uh, that's my understanding. It's, it's a very Catholic thing. I know that. Um, so yeah, the, the baby is like, probably like supposed to be baby Jesus. I just don't know who, like, who thought it was a good idea to put baby Jesus in a cake. I don't know. Like to me, like, I, I don't want, I don't want to diss anybody's culture. Like for all I know, it'd be sacrilegious to say that that's sacrilegious, but it seems sacrilegious to put baby, like baby Jesus in a cake. I, just my, just my hot take. Um, Maybe somebody out there in the world can educate me. I, I, I try to like, you know, keep an open mind about things. Maybe somebody can fill me in about what, what the, uh, what the idea is there and stuff so that I can become more educated on it. And I won't sound as dumb as I do now, but like right now, I don't understand how baby Jesus ends up in a cake, but that's just me. Everything else is pretty cool though. Like I love, I love carnival culture. I love the, I love the uh, parades. I like, um, I like the king cake. The king cakes is is great. Like uh, I would eat that year round. Um, I love the Mardi Gras Indians. That is so cool. It's such. So there's a documentary on it. Um, I think it's on Netflix. But oh, what was the name of it? I don't know. The same people who were doing that documentary on Forrest Finn, they did a documentary on the Mardi Gras Indians. And um, I do recommend it. It's it's really cool. Kind of gives you some insight. Or just watch Treme. Treme is a great show. Um, it's all about, like, New Orleans after Hurricane Katrina. So, like, you know, most of us were alive at that time and got to see that kind of travesty occur like in real time and the show is it's fictional but it kind of stays true to like what actually happened and um it's really interesting so it kind of goes into some of those details about mardi gras i just love the idea of mardi gras mardi gras is great kid i love coffee cake probably better than red velvet ah oh, that's tough i love red velvet too I love red velvet with the uh, cream cheese frosting. I just love cream cheese frosting. If you put cream cheese frosting on anything, it's going to be good. Uh, carrot cake, doesn't matter. Just put, 
Yeah, put cream uh, cream cheese frosting on uh, king cake. I, I I don't actually know what the frosting is supposed to be on that, but let's see. Uh, Hater says the symbolic act uh, representing prophet uh, prophet Abra Abraham hymns Abraham. Uh, okay, uh, readiness to sacrifice his son Ishmael Ishmael uh, in obedience to God's command. Uh, I reckon. I reckon that's what my father was doing when he rescued that sheep. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So was it a full-grown sheep like this, uh, hater? Like, like this isn't a, I think, a, like an adult bighorn sheep. That would be interesting. Ah, uh, Lorraine makes good cinnamon rolls. That sounds like an offer. Lorraine, how do we get your cinnamon rolls? How do we, how, how do we get you to send us all some cinnamon rolls? Where, where can we... Like, do you have a shop? Have you monetized that yet? Because that's, that was the, uh, that was the joke that, um, Ryan George was making. I feel like we should, um, we should all get on Lorraine to, like, uh, make, um, some cinnamon rolls that we can order. Because that sounds great. The king cake refers to the three kings who traveled, followed the star, and brought gifts, uh, on Epiphany. I don't know. Oh, uh, Bear's just going to pop into the shot right here. Hey, Bear. Just going to hang out with me while I'm, uh, while I'm painting this uh, bighorn sheep, huh? You know, like, we're only an hour and a half into this. We still have some time. It's not time yet. She gets so jealous of you guys. Like, she likes you guys, but also, whenever you guys are on here, she's, like, super jealous of you guys. They're, they're, they're internet people, okay? If you if they were here, they'd be giving you pets too. Just go lay down for a little while. We'll catch up later. So there are some details in this horn that are like super dark. That's going to be challenging. I need a liner brush for that. I'm going to try it. I'm going to try that, guys. I'm going to try it right now. Um, Yeah, dog, if you do get down, don't don't step in the coffee and spill. Where's my liner brush? All right. Even though I had other brushes somewhere. Oh, they're over here. Okay. I get a little lost sometimes, guys. Alright, so I'm gonna try to get some of that syrupy stuff going. I mentioned before. Alright, so I'm trying to get some of the syrup mixed up so that I can get some darker areas. So let's see how this goes. Because I want I want like these specific lines. And this stuff I kind of have to just be careful with. But there's some like dark lines that kind of come up. Not really cracks, but just like well, I guess they're cracks. But they're not like cracks as in the horn crack. It's just how the horns are made. I guess these horns, like, I don't know. You guys let me know if you know. <laughs> but I'm thinking these horns are kind of like, um, almost like fingernails, where they kind of grow over time and just add on to each other. And that's what they look like. They look like, they look like they start growing and then just kind of like, because like, if you let your fingernails grow out, like, I I've seen this in like the Guinness Book of World Records or whatever, they'll start looking like these, these, uh, horns but i do think that these are like almost like um fingernails and fingernails are almost like hair i think i think they're made up of the same stuff but these little details i think go a long way to really selling the idea of these uh these horns it also it lets you know kind of like the shape of the horns as well because like the contour is very specific with these. Whereas like, if you don't put these in, you can kind of like, just use your own imagination about which direction these things go. That makes sense. Oh, Lorraine's gonna send Bear some uh, cinnamon rolls. I don't think dogs are allowed to have uh, cinnamon, are they? Maybe they can, like in moderation or something. 
I'm always having to look up because, like, I don't know, left to my own device, I'd probably poison these dogs by accident. I'm always having to look up what uh, dogs are allowed to have. Oh, with cream cheese icing. See, now you're talking about cinnamon, but uh, cinnamon. I love cinnamon. The uh, hater says it was an adult one. I had a hard um, time handling him. I wrote the details about it. Uh, you missed it in the chat, Jeremy. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'll, I, I I go back and I look at these chats later and stuff, so I'll go back and reread that. Sorry, I missed that. I get lost. Sometimes I get stuck on the picture I'm doing. Sometimes I get stuck in my own head. What I really need is like, um, I need to train Bear to speak English so that Bear can call my attention to things in the chat. That's what a co-host would do. I need a co-host to, uh, to actually sit here and read out things from the chat so that, because I've seen other people that that's kind of what they do on their shows. They, they have like an assistant or something handling the chat while they're doing the work. Like, I don't want to miss any comments from anybody. Even the most ridiculous comments. I, I, I enjoy those too. Like there's, there's some comments that I don't endorse, but they're still funny to read, you know, like you guys should spend some more. Um, I appreciate that you guys do the uh, comments in here, like in the uh, chat and stuff like that, but don't, don't forget to uh, leave comments on the, um, the videos themselves. Uh, like whenever you get bored or something like that. I love those comments. Like, especially some of the funny ones, like you guys drop some really funny ones in there sometimes. I am just as much of a uh, fan of you guys as like, you know, you guys could ever possibly be of me. Like you guys are super humorous. And, um, you know, sometimes I like straight up rely on your guys' opinion about things. Uh, like, especially when it comes to like movies that I should watch and, and TV shows I should, uh, you know, participate in and so on. Yeah, you're joking. Just uh, probably not good for dogs. I mean, I don't know if they're allowed to have cinnamon or not, but like, I do know that the dog would eat the cinnamon. And I'm pretty sure I've given my dog cinnamon before. I just don't think I'm supposed to. Or, like, not large amounts or something like that. Um, at least I'm smart enough now. I probably wasn't when I was younger. Um, to realize that, you know, you, you, you definitely don't give your dogs raisins or grapes or anything like that. Um, you don't give your dogs um, chocolate. That's a no-no. But oddly enough, you are allowed to give your dogs, uh, like, blueberries. Like, blueberries are supposed to be good for them. And I think I'm going to stop there because even though there's probably some other ones that I, I have a good guess on, I don't want to say the wrong thing on, like, live streams where you guys are like, well, you said my dog can eat blueberries, and it turns out blueberries was really bad for them. I, I think blueberries are fine, but there's, I don't, I'm not as confident about some of the other things that I would probably give to my dog. I would definitely look up anything that I give to my dog. There we go. That's the right answer. Look it up. Check with the vet. Cinnamon may be on that list or maybe not. I don't know. Oh, there's 14 people in here. Hey, there's 14 people. Hey, congratulations. We went up some. It's because it's starting to look like an actual bighorn sheep now. Like when, when the chat first starts out, you know, there's probably so there's a um there's a live stream tab on the YouTube channel, some another or whatever. And um you know, I can imagine when the stream first starts out, some people who aren't subscribed or kind of in there or something like that, and all they see is a blank page, they're probably not gonna hop into the, the stream. But the further along it goes, I mean, maybe they're looking at this and they're like, oh, wow, that looks like a bighorn sheep. Maybe I'll hop in and, and uh, hang out for a bit, which is cool, you know. Um, I don't know which dogs are the door. Uh, bear. I mean, sorry, not bear. Uh, again, it's going late. No, it's not time yet. We're getting close, though.
I do like these like little darker areas on these uh, horns. I think that they add a lot of texture that just makes it look cool. And it's not like I have to draw each individual little line that makes this up. Just a few of them, I think. Just to uh, kind of do that whole suggesting. So down here is still a little wet, so I can't do much down there. Uh, I have to wait until it dries to be able to put like a layer above it that's not going to just kind of blot out. That's that's ultimately why this stuff takes so long is because you have to let some of it dry before you can you can do anything with it because like this is wet right so like if I come over and I try to put a line in it's just kind of get blotted out you can't really see it uh, versus up here where it's dry if I put in say if I put in a line here it will actually kind of show up and stuff so some of the stuff you just have to like let dry continue working on it. That's why you see me jump around a lot. So like down here, I think it's kind of dried a bit. So come back and kind of blob in some uh, darker areas here. Let's see, we need to mail each other our uh, other asteries. I grew up in a bakery. I'm down to make a big batch of pies and send them out. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah, maybe we can get like a little food uh, food. Um, yeah, what it, I don't know, like a, I don't know what you would call that, like, like a food group or something. I don't know. Oh, your first job was Marie Callender. Nice. They're the people that make the frozen pies. Nice. I mean, honestly, that's kind of my go-to frozen pie company. Cinnamon in small amounts are okay for dogs, but sugar maybe not. Yeah. I mean, that, that, that was my understanding, too. I don't think you're supposed to really give your dog sugar at all. And, like, that's probably what's wrong with my dogs. Uh, I do kind of give them sugar sometimes, even though I'm not supposed to. And they're always hyperactive. But they're funny, though, when they're hyperactive, you know? I don't, I don't know. I'm, a, I'm probably not... I'm probably not a role model when it comes to like the proper caring for your pets. I love my pets. Um, from that standpoint, I am the perfect pet owner. I love my, I adore my pets. They're, they're like family. They are more important to me than some other family members. Uh, you know, sorry, my brothers, <laughs> but I like my pets more than you. Um, so from that standpoint, I'm a perfect pet owner. From actually being a good parent to my pets, nah, probably not. I'm probably not very good. Um, I will I will forever advocate for good pet uh, caring though. Like even though I'm not the perfect perfect guy to take care of pets, I will always advocate for people taking care of their pets in the appropriate ways. Oh, they can eat green beans. There you go. Um, green beans are good. I, I did hear that cinnamon, uh, not cinnamon, uh, blueberries, sorry. Um, I heard that blueberries are good for dogs. I do try to give them blueberries, but I didn't know about the green beans. That's cool. Jack likes to canine carry out bacon. Nice. You made the best, uh, Hater says I made the best croissants, uh, qua quas, croissants, okay, sorry, croissants, uh, my croissants are superior to those made by the French themselves. I believe you. Oh, let me try that again. Cross, croissants. I, I, I feel like every, every stream I end up trying to do an impression and just botch it. I'm just not very good at these things. I'm terrible at impressions. I feel like it, I feel like I could pick up any kind of foreign accent or like foreign um, language if I had a good, I don't know, six months in the country or something. But just like until then, I'm just not very good at those things. Like even here in the U.S., I'm, I I live in the U.S. I'm an American. 
I, I was raised in the South, but I spent most of my life in the Midwest. Um, like even saying something like New Orleans, New Orleans, geez, whatever the, the place is for Mardi Gras, it comes out like part of me wants to say New Orleans because a lot of the people I, I grew up around used to say that. Part of me wants to say New Orleans because like a lot of people around here say it that way. I'm just all over the place when whenever I talk about New Orleans, New Orleans, New Orleans, whatever. And if that ain't bad, um, down south, uh, for some reason, we always called pecans pecans. But if you were to say butter pecan, the ice cream, you have to say pecan. So I, I don't I don't get it. I can't even speak English. I can't even speak American English. It's just. So like, I can't do a foreign impression because I can't even speak my own language. I mean, pecans, pecans. You should pick one and just do it. You shouldn't have like certain cases where you do one over the other. Like if it's in relation to ice cream, it's pecan. And if it's anything else, it's pecan. I don't get it. It's so weird. Digging a hold of China over there, buddy. <sighs> Terrible dogs. Uh, so, uh, Hillary, uh, by the Midwest, I mean like, um, I, I mostly mean like Cincinnati. Um, I live in Kentucky. So uh, I have this theory that Kentucky is not one particular place. It's actually made up of three different types of places. So in Kentucky, you have the Appalachian area, which is Eastern Kentucky. That is completely a different geographical area than Northern Kentucky, which is uh, practically the Midwest, uh, because that's like basically a suburb of Cincinnati. Uh, and then you have Louisville, which is kind of like a little bit Midwest, a little bit Southern. Um, and then you have like the rest of Kentucky, which is basically Southern. So when I say Midwest, I, I'm mostly counting my days living in Cincinnati and uh, my days living in, in the part of Kentucky that's not the Appalachian area. The Appalachian area is basically its own little third world country. I mean, I kid those guys out there, but Man, they, they are having a rough time out there. And um, the uh, Eastern Kentucky is basically where you hear of like, you know, all of the um, the drug addi addiction. Like there's a lot of people who are like addicted to, um, I don't even know what types of drugs, but like your meth and uh, like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know the different types, but that's where the, all of that is. Um, there's like a lot of impoverishment, um, impoverishment out there, if I could say that word. Um, that's where you have your coal mines that are being shut down just because of how the world works. So they're having a rough time in Eastern Kentucky. I, I, I feel really bad for them. I have some, uh, I have a sister-in-law who's from um, Eastern Kentucky and I have some friends that are from East, East Kentucky and, you know, they're definitely, they definitely had a better life after they moved out of Eastern Kentucky. It's, it's pretty rough out there. Let's see. It just says, Jeremy, hats off to you. Well done. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, let's see. Bill Gorman thinks he's going to move to Spain or Greece next year. That sounds great. I would love that. I'll go with you, Bill. We're, we're going to make, we're going to have a, we're going to have a road trip, you and me, man. I, um, of the two, mm, that's tough. I, I would have to want, I think of the two, I would want, in, even though Spain sounds really awesome, like the culture sounds awesome. I would love to go to Spain just for the culture. The history in Greece, I would have to, uh, I would have to choose Greece over Spain. Just because they have that Parthenon there in Nashville that I went to, and it's just like, 
if that's what ancient Greece was like, I gotta go and see that. That'd be cool. So I would love to go and see some of those ruins. I guess you don't have to move there just to visit, though. Like, I don't think you have to, uh, I don't think you have to board everything up and go out there and just kind of, like, do all of that just to uh, experience the uh, culture and stuff. Kentucky, home of the underworld. I feel like this, um, uh, the sheep is like a guardian of the underworld. He looks pretty sinister, doesn't he? I, I think it's the, uh, the horns. Just this type of horns is often associated with like, I don't know, like evil creatures and stuff. Like this could be, this could be a very friendly bighorn sheep, but he just looks evil. Poor guy. He, he's never done anything bad in his life and he just looks evil. So the same sort of like cracks and stuff over on this side, but you got to be careful with these. You don't want to overdo them. Because like the idea is that you, you want to kind of simplify some of these shapes and some of these details. But you also want to make sure that they get in there, you know. They're essential uh, bighorn sheep features. But then you don't want to get like really crazy detailed with some of these things and then like phone it in over here and stuff. So you, you kind of have to have this balance of uh, abstraction and simplification. So I do think that, um, you know, part of your job as an artist is like you don't really, you don't want to do every single piece of detail that you possibly can. But you, so so it's okay to simplify and it's okay to reduce and, and just kind of suggest some of these features and stuff. But, and, and this is my point. Uh, you have to be consistent about it, right? So, like, you have to, whatever you do, you have to do consistently everywhere. There you go. So, like, if I'm going to reduce these uh, cracks down to just some suggestions and stuff, then I have to do that everywhere. I can't just, like, you know, do that here and then, like, put in, like, a lot of crazy detail somewhere else or something like that. I don't know. You just have to have really good reasons for the things that you do. <laughs> it's kind of funny because, like, when I got started with this whole thing a year ago, I didn't have these kind of observations. These are things that I've learned over the last year. And um, now I'm kind of developing this kind of art philosophy, maybe. Like, what what you should and shouldn't do as an artist. <laughs> like... I'm starting to get judgy, <laughs> like, like, I mean, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't look at it as like, oh, that, that's crap or something like that, but I, I, I may have some opinions on what people ought to do, <laughs> which is basically, yeah, I mean, I, I guess at some point it's natural for like, uh, you know, to, you to, to develop opinions and stuff, but I, I definitely catch myself at developing some opinions lately. Like, I look at other people's art, and even art that's way better than mine. I, I get judgy sometimes where I'm like, man, I would not have done that. I would not have done that. I would not. And like, w w why did you do that? That doesn't make any sense. Why would you put that baby in that cake? Why? Why? I don't understand it. So, I guess that's just like maturing as a uh, artist uh, where you where you start looking at uh, different things and you're like, you actually have an opinion on like what things should be done, the way things should be done. I don't know. And it's not like I judge others who don't do things the way I would do them. I just, I just look at it as like, well, you know, I do have an opinion on that. I'm not saying one way is right or wrong. I'm just saying this is what I would do. Which, it's kind of interesting, you know? I am, I'm really liking these horns. Like, I wish I could just kind of copy and paste these horns onto other things. I want to put these horns on a human now. Because I think that would look cool.
Aries was a god. Aries, Aries is a ram. Okay, I thought it was a zodiac symbol of some sort. Hillary says this ram looks sweet. He, he does look sweet, but, you know, the horns make him look evil. He looks like a, a very sweet, evil uh, creature. There you go. It's not his fault. He's just painted that way. But I do like how this is like, I like how these are pulling down here. Now, you guys have seen by tomorrow morning when I put in some like more details and stuff, like I'm probably going to wrap this up soon because we're hitting the uh, two hour mark. And even though I've gone over two hours a couple of times in recent days, I'm really trying to stick to that two hour thing. I, I think it's good for you guys. I think it's good for me. I think it's just good across the board. It's good for my pets. Um, it's probably good for YouTube. I don't know. Um, Anyway, my point is, uh, there are some things that I will probably do to this after the fact, and one of them is I will definitely develop this area a little bit more, because I like that chest area being dark on, on these animals. Like, you know, I, th I think it's a good, um, I think it's a good kind of consistent feature I've been putting into these things. A little bit more than personally. I love these horns. Uh, is kids still in here? Yeah. Kid, I'm agreeing with you. I think that this is one of my better ones. I like it a lot. I'm not saying this is going to be my favorite forever. It's just right now I'm, I'm kind of liking it. I'm digging it. It's possible I might screw it up. <laughs> still pretty early. I still got a little bit of my drink left. I can still screw this up. Nah, I think I'm um, I'm gonna try to wrap this up a little bit for this evening. This has been a, a great conversation with you guys tonight. Like, I feel like we've talked about a bunch of different things. So one of the things I like to do is I just kind of like to get some of these splatter features in, just to kind of like let it dry and see how they they're gonna turn out. Get some of these going now. And depending on what brush you use, you know, you'll get like different thicknesses of these. Like, so this is a, this is kind of a, I don't know what the actual number is or whatever, but it's kind of like a medium sized brush versus this, like, I use this sometimes just to kind of like put some craziness in. This is kind of like, I don't know, this is almost like, you could use this for like makeup or something, but these are kind of like your biggest, uh, bigger splotches. Like, and then you can kind of get a little crazy with that, like that. Uh, but then probably have to come back and clean some of these areas up like I don't want those there Go and mop some of these up so just a little little tip there like you can get crazy with these splotches and stuff but then it you want to kind of pay attention where they fall and then address them while they're still wet you know like there you go. So like some of those ones that ended up here, I don't really want those there because I want this to be like more detailed. Can mop those up. These other ones, I like that. This is going to dry kind of cool. Like these are going to dry pretty light. Um, but I like that. Um, it, it is kind of like, you know, you don't have a ton of control over it, but also, you know, the more you, the more you do this, you, you kind of have a little bit of control. Like I can kind of direct where these splotches go i have like coffee all over my walls by the way like from doing this like this poor little guy over here he ends up with coffee on him it's, it's kind of fun um but yeah i do kind of want like all of this area to just kind of be a big mess and um some of that needs to dry before i really develop it but all of this stuff through here this is all his neck and stuff and Presumably, even though it's abstracted, it kind of comes down into like legs and, and things like that. So you don't need to paint in the legs, but you kind of want to suggest that there are legs down here. So some of this gets kind of in there. And then, you know, you can kind of get a little bit of gravity going there just to kind of, I just love that, like how it kind of spreads out and stuff. Um, but then, you know, you let it, dry and pull and stuff and you just kind of let it do its own thing 
some it, some of it's supposed to be organic. It's supposed to be like um, it's supposed to be. It's supposed to look like you're just dropping, you know, coffee on a piece of paper. That's what it's supposed to look like, and it, it gets there over time. But it really does supposed to look like, oh man, crap! I spilled coffee all over my paper, and oh wow, a bighorn sheep popped out of it. That's so amazing. How did that happen? But you know, you guys have seen these things before. But anyway, I do think that this is a good start for it. I'm going to finish it up over the evening, add some details, and um, you know. Uh, like always, be sure to check the community tab tomorrow. You'll see some, uh, you'll, you'll see the finished thing. Uh, I do like this one. Um, you know, this is on the bigger paper. Um, some of these bigger animals and stuff I've been trying to feature on the bigger paper. I like how this one's turning out. I think it's a great addition to it. Let's see. What do you guys have to say? So put gummy worms in a cake. It's all about liars and butter slams. Let's see. Great job. Chinese history is older than the Bible. I mean, that may actually be true. Um, Jeremy, I would uh, buy a Maker's Mark bottle with that RAM on it. I'm going to submit this RAM. Is one of So basically you get like, I don't know, like up to five pictures that you can submit as proof of uh, like your work. And then you have to submit a proof of um, like not a proof of concept, but like a prototype of what you think the thing would be. And I think that this is a good exercise for me anyway. Even if I don't get the commission, it's still um, it's still a good exercise. Because, like, if you ever did do some sort of um, um, thing like this, like, say, say the city is commissioning somebody to come in and paint a mural on the side of a building, you still have to submit proof, uh, like, you have to submit um, examples of your work, and you have to submit your concept for what that mural is going to be. So this is all stuff that I need to do anyway. It, it, I think it's a good process for me. So even if I don't end up doing the Maker's Mark bottle, I'm still going to do everything uh, that I'm supposed to to get that gig if I can. Um, just because I, I feel like it's a good exercise. And that's what that's what this channel is all about. It's about personal growth and, you know, doing things that make you feel uncomfortable. Like I hate being judged like that. But also, I think it's important, you know, I think it's important to get out of my comfort zone and, and give it a try. Anyway, that's all I got to say. And I, I do encourage you guys to do to have that kind of philosophy in your own lives where, um, you know, do the thing that scares you. Uh, it always works out. It really does. Like if you, uh, I have I have consistently done that throughout my life. Um, anytime that there's something that scares the death out of me, that's the thing I want to do. I want to do the thing that scares me uh, because, it, you know. Fortune favors the bold. It really does. You have to try these things. So for you guys out there who are aspiring artists, go out there and try to try to, you know, win a competition too. We'll see. Anyway, it, it could go terrible and uh, they could just laugh at me and, and that's fine too. Let's we'll see how it goes. Um, Peter says he's become quite skilled in cooking. Cool. Like you should do a YouTube show on cooking. That's cool. Uh, Tom says great picture. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, Truly, uh, strongly advise against eating out. Yeah, like some of the some of the fast food joints out there is just terrible. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna wrap this up. I appreciate you guys hanging out for me, uh, hanging out with me. Uh, let me go back to this. Yeah. So uh, again, uh, I'm not gonna keep you guys. I know that it's uh, kind of late on the uh, eastern side of the United States and probably in some other countries. Um, but uh, Tuesday night, hanging out. Creating a big, a big uh, horn sheep. Uh, I think this turned out pretty well. So be sure to check out the uh, community tab in the morning and see what some of the finishing details are. I think that's it for me. The dogs are getting antsy, so I'm gonna go put them out. So you guys have a good one. Have a, uh, enjoy the rest of your week. I'll see you guys on Friday. Bye. Bear says hi. All right, see you guys. Bye. Bye.